Gradient Team Ban. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's game number three between NSD and Ian. As you would expect, with a third game and a best of three, this is the decider. The score is one to one. Ian dudes, coming back strong in game now. number two after losing game one to uh, Rapping Ninja Potom. The Potem. green team is banning <laughs> someone uh, now. And the ban by Ian is Rapping Ninja Potom. So they think they're doing something right here. Uh, once again, joining me is Demonic, going to be uh, joining us for this excellent third game. And... Yeah, this is the new gaming need, powered by Asus and, or sponsored by Asus and Steel Series, powered by Telcom. And we're going to be jumping in straight away. Remaining. The score is one to one, as you can see. Raping Ninja Pot and Band Arts. Batrider Band Arts, that's what I'm doing. I don't know why that's been banned out so heavily by NSD. Like, it doesn't really, like, suit Ian Playstyle that much. I mean, they did pick it a little mm -hmm. bit when they uh, when Batrider was very popular, but in recent times, Batrider hasn't been that popular. No, there are some teams that, that tend to favor him. Uh, IFG Int favor him quite heavily. They, I think they, pick, they picked it up in almost every single one of their games in the last few weeks. Um, but uh, Ian, I don't think, have recently picked up any sort of Batrider from what I can remember. And it's not a hero that they generally gravitate to. So maybe NSD are just uh, not interested in playing against that hero. I know that I'm always, almost always banned an Ex-Assassin because I have no interest in playing against that hero ever, just because I hate it so much, so perhaps it's just a, a flavor kind of thing. But we're going to see uh, the second band being an Ancient Apparition from Ian, which is also fairly five stock seconds, standard. Five seconds I mean, Batrider's been picked up quite heavily like in in certain like metas, like yeah. I think the Asian metas. Radiant team. Still picks it quite heavily for the offlane, and it's, it's, it's more banned for the offlane, but it's normally when they're running like a one core. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a specific single hero that they really, really Dyer can't, can't afford pick. to get brought down. It hasn't really been the case here. Like, NSD have very often been running two cores. Like, in their first game, they had Potom and Doom. In the second mm -hmm. game, they had uh, Bristleback and Ember Spirit. Like, their mid hero normally is a hero that scales pretty well, or yeah. they have an aggressive trial in and the safe lane farmer. Invoker is the go to hero here for energy esports. So, the, with these bands coming out, I mean, are we going to see a Bristleback get picked up once more? Is that really what's, uh, what it's going to come down to? They do have two picks here, NSD. Five seconds remaining. So far, the team with two picks has won their games both times. Reserve time. Yeah, it's got to be interesting. Uh, I think NSD may want to may want to pick up a few more ranged heroes this time. Obviously, Potsum would be one of their favorites to pick up in that department, and it's not available to them. But they still have a lot of heroes that they are comfortable in. We're going to see a Doom pick up once again. Dire team pick. So Doom has been on the winning side both times so far this matchup as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That is uh, in Deedles. And uh, while we're at it, let's just have a few shots to all you viewers out there tuning in for this action. Uh, apparently I've got... Uh, it is, uh, I will lose several friendships if I don't shout out to Ian Entertain, also known as Jason Rist, uh, former Han player and good friend of the, uh, the twins. So he's definitely in the audience. Shooting out there somewhere. Five seconds remaining. He's a he's a very good rock mm -hmm. climber. That's yeah. That's, formerly that's rise not, against. If I'm not mistaken. Reserve time. Yeah. What's his neck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Doom plus one. What's the plus one? Full on Dukes. Uh, Clan NSD going to be picking up here. They're using they always use a lot of their time for like their second pick and their fourth pick. Like that's where it's always at. Mm. Because obviously the last pick, like you know where all the enemy lanes are going to be, or you know what what they're aiming for for a mid lane. Yeah. So you, like it's always like quite reduced, or you just need another support. So it's generally very easy. It's always, but in SD always use like all their time. Yeah, they like to go into the think tank about their picks, just delve in deep and see what they see what they come up with. We've yet to see, we've seen one central band. We have yet to see a central pick so far in this series. Um, who's He's shown some recent popularity in almost all the scenes. And it's really good with the lick there. So we're going to see a Lich Radiant as the second pick. pickup from NSD. So that's the first Which time. Which means that... the energy have to ban Tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Tree Lich combo. Uh, too powerful. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but Bravado, Bravado Black picked that. And some of the some of the local guys who are watching the game just said GG. <laughs> GG OP. Tree Lich, too powerful. Two armors on you, healing, blocking, and reducing the attack damage of the opponents. Like yeah, good luck trying to, good luck trying to kill anything. Yeah. 
Um, but Five seconds remaining. In all reality, we, we have energy here who don't really know what NSC are going to do here. The, the Lich Reserve could be an offlane hero, mm -hmm. could be a, a support, it could even be like a mid Lich against Invokers. Maybe not the best given that Invokers at the moment like taking quite a few levels in quests. So yeah. the way Lich wins lane is that he pulls back his lane while harassing the enemy and deny like as a result of denying the creeps pulling back the lane mm -hmm. meaning that he can he can last it successfully and i don't know if that's going to work out against an, some something like an invoker who just can survive that uh, harass and harass the lich back out of lane himself yeah the uh, lich is most likely going to be in support role he's a really good self sufficient support with his dark radiant just team to align his ban. Dark, sacrifice sorry just to allow him to uh, Continually keep his mana up Dyer and align to spam man. constantly, which is why he was originally used as a solo middle back in Dota One, just because he was really good in the matchups green against things like Shadow Banning Fiend someone and, now. and heroes like that that you could just spam effectively out of lane. But now in the new new era of middles, where we've got things like Invoker, which are a lot more versatile, he sort of faded from the the mid role into a support role. So it's very unlikely that we're going to see it. Literally, is a possibility in that mid. Bad dudes banning uh, someone. Meanwhile, well, I know that I know that Shanks was a huge yeah. like hater of playing Lich mid, but sometimes when he was playing mid, he in the Bravado squad, he was forced to play it mid. So same with LGP, they both hated the hero mid, but they played it when when required to. Another ban coming out here is the uh, the Sand King. So another like full on Duke's favorite. Five seconds remain. Full on Duke's now have a have a ban and also a pick first pick in the second phase. Yeah. So Reserve what are they going to go for here? I mean. Do you think do you think they're going to declare their carry early, or do you think they're going to move? I mean, we never see like a gyrocopter up on the side of NSD. We never see one of those like traditional mm. hard carry. Like I haven't seen a doom. Sorry, I mean a, a void or a gyrocopter or a morphling on their side at all. They just yeah. don't like those type of heroes. Yeah, they tend they tend towards more sort of. And I was just I was about to say that if they Dieting they might pick up a lunar, but there tends to be their their trend to. Ban that Luna in that fourth ban spot, which is exactly what NSD are going to do. I think for the third game in a row, we see Luna, Luna in their banner. fourth ban spot. I mean, it is the hero that Clitzy Bananas really likes, but yeah, you know, is it, it's not that good. NSD are definitely one to stray away from what what would de what would you know people call the normal carries, the sort of standard carries. fair. Yeah, the standard fair. They tend towards more uh, maybe a couple of semi carry cores or sort of one heavy core. One slightly different Five heavy core, and then remaining. a couple of semi carries, depending on what, what they want to accomplish. Lifesteal. And we're going to see a life stealer actually. So, radiant team pick. Y you could say that that's probably a stock standard. Uh, one of these stock standard uh, carry heroes. So that's he's really good against uh, Invoker, just because he has the rage, so he can stop things like Cold Snap and the EMP from affecting him, um, and it's just from stopping the the visage uh, from being able to do his damage as well. So Lifesteal is a really good pick here. Yeah, it's going to mm. be really good uh, in a try lane if they decide to try lane with the Lich as well. The spam plus the ability to keep Five the, second. Five keep the wave remaining. back with the Lich is going to be... It's going to make Ian into a... force Ian into a difficult Reserve position time. if they decide to run try lane against try lane. Well, we do see the Viper coming Dying out once again by Ian, so maybe they're going to switch up their lanes somehow try to deal with this effectively. I mean, uh, Invoker, I think, is still penciled for mid. I think Clitzy Banana is going to be playing the Viper though this game. Viper is such a strong hero against Lifesteal. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. to see a Bane banned out, um, sorry, picked up here by Full Andrews just to deny it from Energy Esports. It would be, it's just such a strong hero against the Lifestealer. Yeah, Viper, um, even though his ulti doesn't do damage, obviously the slow effect just stops the Lifestealer from being able to five get his remaining. claws onto anyone. And especially once the Viper has the Argonims with a 12 second cooldown, he pretty Reserve much, time. he pretty, the Velocity was pretty much shut down at that point if he's not able to bounce in on the back of another hero through his ultimate. Five seconds remaining. We've got four seconds left in NSD's overtime there. Clinks. <laughs> with Clinks one second left, they pick up a pick. Clinks. This is another, so, okay, so this is kind of saying to us that they have to go aggressive try lane now because mm. Clinks. Okay, so if Clinks is middle, it's going to get probably destroyed by Invoker like yeah. round level four or five. So Clinks has to save lane, which means like what are they going to do? Like how are they going to lane this? Are they going to go? Okay, what about Lifestealer Lich dual lane middle? 
clink safe lane, doom off lane, and then that, that, five that's surprising, remaining. but like it it could work. It could work, yeah. Wraith King coming out here. What Dyer the hell is happening here? This must be like this is game three, game. people. This is game three. <laughs> this is what game three has devolved into: is a Wraith King pickup. Yes. Now, Wraith King is a hero that I, I don't know if you know the player King. I used to be on a team with him from. Mass yes, Victoria. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's rated like above Deathly, I think, in terms of the MMR. Five He's like a very, remaining. very solid hero, a uh, player, and he's like. Just pick Wraith King, you win. Band. You win with Wraith King. <laughs> he just says it in the weirdest way. But um, <coughs> it is going to be picked up here. And I don't think it's going to be a support Wraith King either. So does this mean that we're going to see aggressive tri lane with Wraith King, Visage plus one, and then Viper safe lane invoke? Sorry, v Viper. Yeah, either Viper safe lane or off lane, depending on how you view it. And Invoker in the Five mid. Sunstrike. Remaining. We could see a, a Exort heavy Invoker. If we see a Vengeful Spirit picked up here last by Energy Esports, what is the ban going to be? Surely the Venomancer, I think, is like where it's at, where the money's at right now. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I imagine a Venomancer ban, probably. That's mm, one of the strongest supports still left in the pool. The Wraith King is an interesting pick, man, because even with the ranged heroes, they now still get some of his Vampiric Aura. It's a little bit. It's not even a little bit less. I don't think it stays exactly the same. So they still benefits from the lifesteal on Wraith King. So that, that means the Viper and the Invoker are actually going to be gaining life while bashing on these heroes. And uh, he, Wraith King is... His crit gives him the potential to take down a lifestealer. I would say that the Wraith King probably needs a little bit more farm than a lifestealer to be able to take a lifestealer down in sort of a one-on-one -on -one matchup. But the Wraith King does have the advantage of being able to reincarnate and come back with full mana and full life and do it all over again. Yeah, and there's no natural diffusal carriers on the mm. side of Fulan Dukes. I mean, Clinks isn't going to go, Lich isn't going to go, Five Life seconds is... remain. Oh, I have seen a Doom pick up a diffusal before. The, the reason that Dooms pick up diffusal... Oh, here comes a Shadow Shaman. That's oh. a nice hero as well. Yeah. The reason that Doom, um, Dooms I've sometimes seen pick up diffusal blade is that the enemy has sheep, and they've got another carrier yeah. that constantly gets sheep. To exactly. Get, like, but never as like, an aggressive item. Then again, Wraith King hasn't been picked up that much in uh, compared to Dota for a while now. Ever, I think would be the would be the correct term. He has been seeing some play since his recent changes, uh, but still quite a situational pick at the best of times. He's really one of those heroes that you don't see in competitive play much at all. Five seconds remaining. Just because he tends to be quite a quite a oh, how do I say this politely a noob friendly hero. He's only got one castable spell, so he's much easier for the beginner players to Dota to handle. And it's generally considered to be wanting on a top tier. But we're going to see Crystal Maiden as the final pickup for, for Ian. So they're going to have some mana and a lot of disable. So it looks like Wraith King is going to be picked up by Klitsy Bananas. A random hero is going to take control of the Viper with uh, Shankster. Mm. He's going to, aka Dotorino, he's going to be middle with his, uh, with his Invoker. Yeah, so Wraith King has been picked in 29 games this year in compared to Dota. Yeah. Not bad. And it's got a 48.3% win rate, so... Hmm. Not as bad as you'd expect. I'll take yeah. the die aside for the third game, and in a row, Raping Ninja, Life Stealer, signature classic situation here. MMD is going to be on the Shadow Shaman. Fudge Cloud in the, on the Clinks. We've got Circus Ninja on the Lich, and we're going to have Danto on the, the Lich, on the, on the Doom once more. And on the side of EN, we're going to have EN Zero taking up the Visage again. This game, we're going to have Random Hero switching to the role of Viper this game. It looks like he's actually going to be going to the safe lane. We've got uh, Shankster, aka Dotorino, going to be going in mid with his uh, with his Invoker once more. He's got to uh, pull two sets of Tangos, and he's got his uh, Quas build, build going. Same. Yeah, same build. He's LGP. Shankster looks like he's going safe lane. It looks Random like they're busy. Like... They're busy, sort of trying to make up their mind. LGP is going to be heading towards bottom lane on his crystal maiden, so he's looking to get up a couple of early levels, probably with frostbite just in the bush. I, I, I think he's just going to go ward for yeah. Bart and then Shanks is moving in there. So and Clutchy Bananas be... is up top with the sa with the Wraith King. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. I keep on wanting to call it Skeleton King. Copyright Blizzard hashtag. Oh. Man, this is going to be an interesting Radiant game to Both interesting picks from both sides. So it looks like the Doom is actually going to be...
in the middle lane. Circus Ninja is sitting here Trying with the Lich to make deny, and it looks like Cloud's actually going to go into the off lane with that Clinks. So he's going to be up against the Invoker, which is exactly what the Invoker wants, I think. Into the Valley of Death rode the five idiots. Raping Ninja is heading up towards top, but it looks like he's going to be by himself for the meantime. Uh, Circus Ninja actually looks like he's uh, he's heading down towards bottom, so he's going to be helping out Cloud here by the, by the looks of things. He does have two Sentry Wards on him. Maybe he's just coming down to check out that uh, Ian haven't put down some Sentry Wards to stop the Cloud. Clitty Bananas, meanwhile, heading up to the top lane. He's going to be uh, just fine. Yeah, he should be able to get up, get up a few creep kills. Raping Ninja is here by himself, so he can't really afford to be seen at the moment. He doesn't have a Stout Shield, and he has been pulled two Tangos, and he's got a Salt, so he should be alright for the meantime. Interesting situation that's occurred here. I mean, they're playing dual lanes mid, dual lanes top, Solos in the bottom. I think this works out better for Ian though. They do have the Invoker against Blinks is like perfectly fine in this situation. The longer lane always affects the like is always a benefit for the more aggressive player and the, and the, the one with more killing potential. And in this case, Invoker is definitely not there for the first couple of seconds or minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. But once he's got level four up and he's got Forge for his Cold Snap no. or Tornado Cold Snap, mm -hmm. it's like you know it's perfectly fine. We see that. Yeah. Cloud heading to just scout out the bottom room. Might be trying to make some plays here. And Lich and uh, his compadre, compadre in the LGP moving and so both moving towards the top lane. And yeah. I don't know why Cloud has done this. I mean, are they doing a lane switch? Or? I think they're doing a lane switch, yeah. Yeah. So, so Doom is going to head towards the bottom lane against Invoker. And I wasn't 100% sure if, we, was, if we, we would see Doom going bottom or whether or not he'd go into the, uh, the jungle. Oh, Stun's going to go off, but uh, Raping Ninja just rages and walks away. But it looks like Ian definitely want to be aggressive in this top lane. They're looking to get some early kills here. They ha I mean, I think they build, like, their, their current situation is that they really do have to do it. Yeah. They're, they're always going to want to go on the Shadow Shaman, though. Ooh, Lich is actually in a, such a good position here. He's got invisibility, he scouted everything else out. And they want to make a kill on Clitzy Bananas. They want to be the aggressors in this top lane here. Because once Clitzy hits 6... They can't kill him, and he's gonna just be farming. Mm -hmm. If you, if you have to kill a hero twice, then it's always a bad situation. This is very dodgy over here. Clitzy Banana is moving forward, and he's gonna get shackled up. I don't know what he was thinking, going so, so close to tower. Circus Ninja is gonna take a lot of damage. He might actually go down, but Zero is actually overextending to do this. It looks like he might go down himself. Raping Ninja doesn't have any mana to follow up with uh, open wounds, so he's gonna be just Zero's gonna be able to get away, but. Clitzy Banana just overextending there, it's costing him his life. Uh, the positioning was a little bit awkward there. Good positioning from Make My Day though, he was standing, hiding in the bush, just patiently waiting for Clitzy Banana to overextend, which is exactly what happened. And now this lane bottom is a little bit more interesting of a dynamic. We have Doom who's a level down, but Shanks is going, like trying to sneak into the side here so he can buy boots. Picks him up. And he's got his. Now that he's got phase boots, I think that the harassment really kicks in. It's the same as like Windrunner versus a melee hero. Mm -hmm. lane. Now, once you get those 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 phase boots up and you start hitting a lot harder, it's a lot harder to stay in the lane. Dooms has got a little bit of help though, in the form of Scorched Earth, but he is maxing Devour it seems. Very he has picked point. up a unholy aura as well, so he does have that extra regen. And just he's to also help him try and stay. Out, yeah? yeah. And Shanks is trying to get forward to just. Break that uh, that salvo for him. Oh, sorry, I didn't bring that on creeps. That so one, two, three going the way of Ian. Despite Clitzy Banana is dying, he's leading in terms of last hits here. And mainly because I guess the uh, the Wraith King does hit like a little bit of a truck. Yeah, and he's decided he to go to be, for. He, he needs to be baiting though. He needs to be like S canceling his stun, just to try bait out a raid from Wraithing Ninja. Yeah. Clitz Bananas maybe just wanting to play it safe for the moment, but that is something that you can do to try bait out the stun. You can start your animation and stop it, but the, with the, the best was, was Finn in yeah. in, in uh, Dota 1. Mm -hmm. You could like, the lightning would come out of you and your your bolt would like almost leave your hand <laughs> and then it would just you know, stop. I'll, to this day, I'll never forget the day we played against MYM in Dota 1 many years ago. It looks like there's going to be some action top. Yeah, Clitzy Banana just throws a stun, Raping Ninja is just going to go on Zero in the meantime. Zero is going to get cheap, so he's not going to be able to cast off any spells, and he's just going to die, so that's a nice easy kill from NSD. 
to get a kill back and to get to actually go two zero two zero up in this uh, in this try lane so far. So they're doing a great job. Yeah, kills have been on his N zero feeding here, but um, we see Viper picking up some boots, <laughs> messing with the courier bits, finally making its way. Up. It looks like they want to go on Cloud. Cloud gets dusted. Uh, LTV is going to be able to get the hold off, and Random Hero is going to pick up an easy kill here. Oh, nice play. Um, <laughs> the dust seemed a bit premature, and I think that if the reactions were a little bit better, we might have seen a bit easier of a time there for him to live, but nevertheless, great play. And we're seeing that Shank's using his experience uh, both within the game and also within Clitzy the Bananas game. Clitzy is in trouble on top lane. He throws the stun, but Raping Ninja manages to get off the rage in time. Clitzy Bananas is two hits from dead. Zero is going to be able... Oh, Zero gets off the uh, the Grave Chill, which has got to stop Clitzy Bananas. Because Circus Ninja is taking a lot of damage, and he might actually go... Oh, he's one last hit, but he's still going to be just fine. He's got to solve, and he'll be perfectly yeah. okay. So 315 base move speed, too fucking good. Um, too very good. Too very uh, good, yeah. <laughs> Many goods were there. Many goods indeed, and uh, this mid lane is a little bit awkward for Cloud9 until he hits level 6 and, and manages to pick up a big creep. I think he's always running the risk of Crystal Maiden playing aggressively. Yeah, he decided to go for a for a soul ring on, yeah. on the clinks. It's pretty pretty standard, I think, yeah. at the moment. But uh, he may have been better just getting a Wraith Band or something, just a little bit of extra life, I imagine, at this stage. Haste. But... The LGP with with regards to the, the oh, dust. I think top lane. Zero is in a little bit of trouble here. He's gonna die. I think this is a situation where they've kind of got to they've got to do something. Yeah. They've got to change the dynamic of this of this game. And we see that Santa is gonna get brought down here. Cloud's coming towards the bot lane. They're gonna get a kill onto Shanks. So a nice cross kill happening there. Hasted up. Things very hard to run away from. And I think that a lot of the reason that that worked out, like and. The reason that we we saw Shanks die so quickly there is like even though he got like he wanted to be within the experience range of the death of the mm -hmm. doom. Um, I mean obviously getting the kill means that you get the gold, but doesn't necessarily mean that you get the experience. I yeah. Don't think, in this, if he's out of experience range, so unless it's scripted, like Invoker's Sunstrike is scripted so that no matter where you get the kill, you get experience. And take his bombs as well, yeah. Yeah. When they yeah. when they do start to come in, yeah. But tornado is not one of those spells, as far as I'm aware. So uh, he moved quite far forward. And if he just if he was if he didn't go for that, if he stood back a little bit, might have made it to the tree line and been able to juke cloud. But cloud was hasted up, so. Now see, interesting to note that we have the same amount of kills seven minutes into the game as I think we did at about twenty minutes in in game two. Yeah. So both teams are definitely playing more. Looks like Cloud is going to be in trouble. He's been dusted again. He's going to get EMP and held and just utterly brought down to the bush here. And I get the, the creep that he was killing off as well. And Zero's moving into the bot here. This might be an opening for them on uh, on Santa. They did just blow a lot of cooldowns though. But Cold Snap and also Tornado have very, very short cooldowns. Plenty of Bananas is about to die. Here. Yeah. He's looking for a deny against. Oh! 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 What? You know that the whole time Shadow should have got the kill. This is definitely going to form part of a part of a little video. Oh, what? You see Santa taking some action in the bot lane. He's going to try to turn around here. Is he going to be able to get Doom off? Looks like Zero might be doomed up here. Does get doomed up. You're going to see a deny. I think just a just a classic deny coming out here. Nice work over there. So Dunks is playing it safe. Not actually going to go on the aggressive on Santa. And Santa's the mech carrier, so if they can make a couple more gangs on Santa, it's going to be actually really good for like the team fight, the mid-game team fight. Yeah. And Shanks is farming very, very well here. Random hero though, exceeding my expectations of his ability to farm in mid, and uh, hitting a lot of creeps. I think Viper's the, he's found his calling in Viper. Yeah, he's doing a really good job with sitting at top of the leaderboard, uh, and he's just shutting down Cloud in middle. Cloud has now taken two deaths to the face so far in this game. Managed to get a kill in return, but he's not doing too well, and he's gonna be a while. He's gonna get up his trades first before he decides to go for that awkward. So ten minutes into the game, he's gonna be nowhere close to that awkward. Not even started it, in fact. And it looks like Doom's in a lot of trouble right now. He's running for the side shot, picking up his phase boots, and in doing so, sealing his own death. Didn't get a TP scroll. Clipsy Bananas is here, and. The permafrost of justice really going to bring him down. Clitzy Bananas needed that. I think Clitzy has some kind of migrates into the jungle right now. Like, despite that being like one of the most inefficient things to do, mm -hmm. 
it's just like they need him to get levels and they need him to like get a few items. And top lane, that's not going to happen. Near zero there. A zero dies is not a huge economic loss if he stands in the tower. As long as as long as he's very hard to kill, then it's just perfectly fine. I mean, Skeleton King, maybe once he gets level 7 or 8, he can move into, back and towards the top lane. Yeah, I think he just needs to get his ultimates more important. Yeah. Just, just before anything, before if he decides to. Twice, I mean, yeah. If, you, if Rapping Ninja gets the slowdown and uh, we see Shack, um, Ether Shock come out by the, the Shadow Shaman, then it's going to be a situation where it's just like, okay, well, we can have Shackles when he respawn. Yeah, I think it's more about... If they're going to kill him twice, I think it's more going to be about mana than anything else, but I think Raping Ninja will have enough mana just to be able to kill him twice. Invoke Stop. is having much more of a fun time in this game. Mm -hmm. He's died once here, but he's farming so well. He has a tornado in the air. There's going to be a cold snap. There's going to be an MP. And double stun coming down. Santo can't do anything. And Shankster picks up that one. He goes 2 for 1. Bringing him back to score 5 to 6 here in uh, in this third game. So the, the Dooms come down bottom and Twy dies on. Twy dies. Dies. Died twice Ninja almost instantly, so, so, so I think it may be worth him just going Naya's into the bush. Is under um, at this stage, just to stop. They need, he needs to stop oh, the kills. Zero's gonna die here. Get sheathed up. Dyer's gonna be shackled up in a second. Attack. Or is he? He's gonna turn around and try to do damage to MMB. But Rapping Ninja brings him down. The top tower is gonna take the fall at a few Green seconds Green after the bottom down, takes the fall son. for the dire side. So, all Sphere and Love and Towers. Yeah, they just decided to trade towers with four towers. So, uh, NSD are gonna probably find it a little bit easier to take towers uh, in the future, just because they have the advantage of serpent wards from the shadow shaman. Yeah, which has a ridiculous cooldown. So these, these, I'm sure that these T1 over. towers on on Ian are probably gonna take some damage within the next few minutes. Cloud at the moment is still looking towards. I think he's got some trades on the way now, but. Oh, he's picked up a hand of Midas actually, so he's looking to catch up Midas. Catch up as as much gold as possible. Yeah, there's no Midas on the side of uh, of Ian here, mm. but Invoker's pick got an item coming towards him. It's going to be a four stuff and possibly the beginning um, of a like more aggressive style of of play for him. Yeah. If he does that, it does leave safe lane free for Clitzy to Clitzy picks up that Quelling Blade. Very, I mean, just showing showing his experience here, I mean, it's so, so much more effective to have Quelling Blade giving you extra 30% mm -hmm. damage, meaning that your farm in the jungle is 30% faster, well, yeah. it's it's not 30% faster, but it's, it's faster, it is, yeah. it is considerably faster. Yeah, that's just a, a good move from an experienced player, just showing off that he knows, he knows what to do, even in these situations where he hasn't been having the best of time, but he's been, his rotations this game have actually been quite exceptional. Down Zero towards the, the bottom lane. Gonna get Clings bombed here. Gonna get brought down straight away. Tries to TP, ridiculous decision. Given the huge outburst of damage that comes from the, the Clings. Raping Ninja there, pretty much along for the ride. It could have just been Raping Ninja, I mean, it could have just been Cloud on his own. We're having some, some, they're flirting with each other bottom. Shankster's actually gonna get doomed and just run away. Santo a little bit premature in, in casting that Doom. Uh, Shankster is sitting at full uh, full Wix on his current yeah, spell, so he's going to be just fine. Yeah, and he's going to be able to go Max Quas to, to get it all back. Here mm -hmm. he goes, Max Quas. He's going to be back up to Dyer's full HP. 15 seconds, 20 seconds time. So, mid tower is taking a lot of pressure, and we see that Shadow Shaman has got his wards once more. They're moving forward. It could be a wonderful fortified. ward trap right here, but going to be too slow. Brother LGP is going to try to get out. Lich throws his ulti and he has Shanks in the middle. Going to be taking a Viper Strike onto Make My Day. He takes the fall. There's no EMP for a few seconds. Shanks playing a conservatively Ghost Walk Invoked. So he's going to be getting that cross kill. Support for support. But mid tower now not going to be able to be defended because there's no Serpent Wards down. Maybe we're going to see a cheeky deny coming out here by Raping Ninja. He's looking for it I think. But Actually, just moving back here. He's going for. He's Dyer's got a sun trap, so he's either going Sun Junyash or Hellbird. Both of which I think are like a little bit interesting in this game. Mm. Not going for the armlet, not going for the uh, the abyssal. And Clancy Bananas is probably going to go drums. I think that we we're going to see Invoker skip drums and go for something else. But once again, as we saw in game one, despite the fact that there's some nice plays happening from the Ian side, there's just like too much farming happening in too many places by NSD. 
Let's have a quick look at the gold graph. Oh, it's actually shot back towards zero. So Doom didn't make a big enough impact in that bot lane to, like, offset the. Oh, I guess it was the tower that they took mid was yeah. was where it was at. Without that tower, Dyer's they would have been looking pretty right attack. now. Yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting state state of affairs. I think both teams have been fighting almost constantly so far this game, and it looks like that fighting's not going to stop anytime soon. Flitzy Minato's going to Dyer's pick up the tower. Raping Ninja is running in. Santo's going to just TP into the tower, and he's. Looks like he might actually be in some trouble. Clissy Munanus has got his ulti up. Seam ult is going to go down. It's doing a lot of damage to MMD. MMD is going to stop it, but it's too late. The damage is already done. Raven Glitch is now in trouble. He infests, but comes out, which may be a mistake. Random Hero and Clissy Munanus is going to take him down. Shankster's coming in, in the meantime. Raven Ninja's got no mana. He's going to go down as well. So that's going to be a 3 for 2 fight. Clissy Munanus is in trouble. Cloud is taking that. In. Cloud gets the kill, so that's going to be a triple kill for Cloud. And he's got no mana to TP. Or even go Invis. Invis has still got 8 seconds. Shanks is taking a lot of damage from the Lich. But, oh, Shanks is not. Oh, and the Circus Ninja's gotta go down. Shanks has gotta survive. 5 for 3 fight. The fight went on so long that it is the. Uh, even had a hero respawn in the form of the Shadow Shaman who's making his way bottom. So, that was an incredible fight there. Very, very, like, tight play happening there. Pause coming up a Rapping Ninja. But very, very tight play by Shanks. He's, yeah. uh, he cast. His level two quest kept him through the fight. So six, what's it? Uh, six HP per second regen coming out from that, and that was like single-handedly what kept him alive there. Lich, I think Lich actually made like a huge mistake turning around there. Should have either decided like he moved forward, got the nova yeah. off, and like right then by going back and putting the nova on, he had to move forward a lot more aggressively to get more hits in on Shanks, mm -hmm. and he just didn't do that. If he if he moved forward and he got one or two more hits in, that would have been Shanks that he got the trade for. Option two would have been just to run for... Run to base for the hills, away. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that was an extremely good fight for Ian. Um, Random Heroes now sitting with a mech and 2,400 gold to his name at 15 minutes into the game, with treads and an equivalent to boots, so I mean, his farm is doing outstanding. Invoker's sitting on 3,200 gold, with the four-star phase boots and a bracer. So, I mean, mm. he's doing exceptionally well. He picked up a lot of gold in that fight. Cloud did die, but he did manage to buy up an Oblivion Staff before he perished. So, he didn't lose as much gold as he uh, as he probably could have. But uh, Crystal Maiden, obviously, he's picked, managed to pick up some wards, a Smoke Deceit, Dust of Appearance, Tranquil Boots. So, she's just doing fine as well. So, Ian are picking up, uh, picking up all the items that they need. And that team fight is going to put them suitably in the advantage uh, going into the mid-game. It is a pity that Clitzy Bunana's died, though. I think uh, his ulti did go off, but they did manage to bring him down twice. I think if they, uh, if he had managed to stay alive there, it would have been an even more crushing defeat for NSD in that team fight. So everyone else back in. Shanks is uh, making his way. Oh, picking up a rune like a professional, making the, the true master of magic, making the rune spawn where he wants him. Absolutely. So we do have a mech up on both sides, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of core items, uh, make my days. He's got his mana boots and he's got a wand, but unfortunately he's sitting at 600 gold. Maybe it's worth him just to pick up a bracer just to make sure that he's a little bit more survivable. At 16 minutes, I've seen a lot poorer supports though. <laughs> yeah. True. Lich is on phase boots as well, like just just phase boots 500 gold. And uh, Invoker's going for a sheep stick, it seems. Either that or Lincoln's. Like, Lincoln's in this game may be a little bit, little bit better than Lincoln's was for Clitzy yeah. Bananas in the previous game, but still not an ideal item. I, can, I suppose it can block off uh, the Doom and a sheep, so it could potentially stop... Uh, oh, they're stop. moving forward here. Nova comes out. Fodge is going to be... Uh, Make My Day is going to get blocked on. Always call him Fodge and no one else, but he's one of the oldest <laughs> members of the Fodge team. Part of their, uh, their version 1 team and now on their version like 4 team, I think it is. It is the uh, only... He's the only one from the from Fodge that was in the league last year, if I'm not mistaken. I did an interview with him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Ooh, Looks like... Cloud's looking for a scout here. Gonna maybe catch up Clitzy Banana, uh, sorry, uh, Random here. Going down on him, he's take, he makes up straight away. Extra armor, very effective. Lich Nova coming forward. The ulti by Lich is gonna do very little. Stun's coming down. There's gonna be a cold snap and a turnaround. Huge damage from Dissage, showing his power then. Raping Ninja, why are you staying? I mean, he does have rage in a few seconds, but is it gonna be enough? 13 for 13, all tied up here. This is Sunday Night Action happening uh, in the Duke Gaming League, and 
It's uh, it's a close one. Oh yeah, Raping Ninja is actually going for Sang and Yashi. He's picked up his Yashi recipe and he's just uh, 200 gold away from picking up the last uh, boots. Oh, it's the uh, Elven at, skin. <laughs> look at Zero here, just playing with his uh, units on the side and just keeping the APM high. I wish there was an APM drop down in the in the side. I would I would love to see I would love to see the AP. That's one thing that they had in Dota One that we haven't been yeah. able to see in Dota Two. I think it's like also sometimes a bit revealing if it yeah. like if you can type APM and you can see it because like you're able to see like whether or not they're pulling and you know. Oh, it wasn't it was intensely broken as well because me with when you played Meepo you used to get absolutely crazy APMs. Yeah. My I think the rec the highest I ever saw was Sixes playing a Meepo at about 400 APM. The map was going yeah, insane. Yeah, individual mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. Sang and Yasha pick up on, on Nakes, so he's decided to just forego the armlet and go straight for... I don't know if I agree with that. I think that he needs it. I think... I... I would love to know the decision not to go the armlet, which is pretty much... Well, armlet has been nerfed like, yeah. in recent times, but I like you still see life stealers go mm -hmm. for that item. Mm, so, Ghost Scepter coming up on Crystal Maiden. Zero's still going for Ags. I think both of them could do with a Ghost Scepter. But Ghost Scepter is actually quite nice. I mean, it's plus seven to all attributes. It almost feels like, you know, it's it's just a worse yeah. spot. In some ways, a better version of an ultimate orb. Mm -hmm. It looks like Cloud has actually got his orchids flying to him now at the moment. That's quite huge. Yeah, that is that is a big pickup in OVM to that, shut like, down the invoker. We're in a situation where, like, if Viper gets orchids, so what? Like, <laughs> if uh, Clipsy Bananas yeah. gets orchids, so what? If Zero gets orchids, like, that's a little bit of a problem, but he's still got the birds to micro. If CM gets orchids, he's fine. If Invoker gets orchids, he four stars away. So yeah. it's, you know, like they really have to do like a lot more work than just. It's not like there's there's heroes running around the map that are easy kills. I think it's I think it's the unfortunate case of you might have to sheep Shanks and then orchids him. Oh, oh, Shanks walking up the hill and down the hill. Oh, he's just uh, flirting. He's got a, he's got enough levels on. He's got max wex, so he's. Flying around at 400 move speed without face boots on, so you should be just fine. <laughs> that is. But yeah, 13 to 13. This is an intense match. If you look at the net worth, it's currently flittering between one and two, between Invoker and Life Stealer. Position three and four flittering between um, the Clinks and the Viper. Four, five and six between the Doom and the uh, the Wraith King. <laughs> Sorry, gotta let matter. <laughs> it seems that only two people who have the the twins' numbers is <laughs> are their mom and uh, and the police. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Those are the only people that you want to contact you. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, so Viper looks like he's almost got an argon Scepter. He's about seven hundred gold away from. Picking that up, so that's good timing from him, considering that he went to Mech as well. It's got some and he chance. also went. He also went, like yeah, similar to the Viper we saw mm -hmm. in the last game by Shanks, but he's also going the like the right order as such. The points booster, the Ogre Club. Yeah. The one thing I'm a little bit like unsure of is like taking four up in Poison Attack and two in Nether Toxin. I don't know mm -hmm. about that. I I. Uh, I've I mean, I've always thought that Nether Toxin is one of his strongest abilities. That that's the well, that's damage true. that comes and out of out of him is insane. Also, when poison attack are buffed, it means that like you get the zero yeah the zero co uh, cool cast time at zero yeah at zero at level one at, at level one. So like it does do like a slightly better slow, but it's not like that much. I mean the yeah. damage over time scales up by like six damage and it's magical damage. So that's like. It does. It would do 12 damage over two seconds, and it actually does nine damage over two seconds. You know, it's like, it's not a really amazing scaling. Yeah. The, the slow only goes up by 10%. The attack speed slow is quite huge. So. The damage scales up by 40 per level, isn't it? Yeah, it's max up to the maximum of 160. And they do have a lot of disable. I mean, there's a lot of disable coming out of Shanks. They've got the stun from Fifty Bananas, and they've got uh, the Crystal Maiden, who also has some some slow and stun as well, so it may have been worth it just to 
just to go for the nether toxin and, and leave a couple of points off that poison attack. Mm. I mean, I definitely agree that maxing Corrosive Skin is the right decision. Yeah. But look here, Zero, e ever the presence uh, watcher that he looks is. Looks like Doom's about to go blink on oh. Random Hero with a lifesteal inside him. A random Hero looks like he's going to die. He pops to make extra armor, but Doom goes oh. down a Random Hero as well. Yeah. Mm. Your green I thought we might see some amazing familiar play. In your bottom. And, uh, oh. We see Cloud just skating out the side there. I thought we might see some amazing familiar play, and we might yeah. see like um, the birds come in and deny him through the Doom. Radiant structures are fortified. But maybe that was just asking a, quite a lot. And it looks like Ian gonna go look for the trade. They want tier two mid for the tier one bots. Not a not a horrible idea, but it's Good more gonna be more about the the question of can they actually Madness, secure it? There's one TP coming in. It's wrapping Ninja on the side. The birds are standing there. They're gonna. One of them's gonna feed. The second one gets dropped down on the ground, and Blink comes in. Stun on three. Huge stun. Wrapping against the tower. Stun on to Santa. He's taking a lot of damage. Slowed up. Lich ulti bouncing and hitting almost no one. The Crystal Maiden is gonna get one in the side here. Ian Brother GP is gonna take the fall. The Lich ulti is still going. Shackle somehow displaces. Stun going up to make my day. They're doing lots of DPS. Alacrity going up. Shanks is trying to bring bring down Cloud. Do they have the damage to seal the deal? Oh! Kissy Bananas comes in and just bumps him and then books him on the back. Viper's back in the action. Grafing Ninja gets Viper strikes. That's a 4-4-2 four, four, fight happening. right there. Well, 4-4-3 four, four, if you include the Viper dying bottom. Yeah. And Lich is just desperately trying to push back mid lane so there can't be any chip damage on this tier 3. Meanwhile, Random Hero running top. The creeps are pushing in bottom doing chip damage there on their tier 2. And I think someone has to get there to deal with it. This could be... This is very, very interesting. The last steal is doing, just providing Shanks with so much more HP in team fights. Clissy Milanis has picked up a, a Maelstrom. So he's going to be going for full attack speed. Oh, he might even pick up the Majolna. The recent buff to Majolna has made the, the passive, uh, if you cast it on yourself, extremely strong. And that puts yeah. a lot of damage to fights on. So that, he may pick up, and we see against who's come out on on Invoker, so Shanks is having a really good time. That's a really fast uh, Gensu, considering that he has a 4 star as well. 6 for 1 for 6, it does that to you. Yeah. He's the most farmed hero on the map right now. Almost 2,000 gold ahead of Raping Ninja, the safe lane carry for NSD. And is the Ags finished up now on Viper, he's going to be just cruising. He needs level 16 though. Clissy Bananas also really would like that level 16. Shanks is at 16, obviously that means a lot less because he's an invoker, mm. but it does mean that we're going to see more levels in Exhort, we're going to see more magic at play here by the uh, by his invoker. Yeah, once uh, once invoker starts getting a couple of levels in the Exhort, that's when he really starts having a lot of fun and gets gets to go to town. It generally, once once you have a, enough levels in Exhort, you may want to pick up uh, uh, Argonim Scepter, just because you could then start to throw down as so many spells in a short amount of time. and. If you've ever seen the Refresher Orb, uh, re refresher orb uh, Invoker, it's something to behold and hopefully Shanks, Shanks, Shanks that definitely, definitely has the skill that. to do it off. Shanks it off uh, definitely, definitely does have the skill to do that uh, on his good days. Maybe this is not going to be one of them, we'll have to see. There's a, a dot coming out by Zerst, I don't know why that, what that's about. Um, but, oh. Ooh, Shanks. Oh, the dust catches Cloud on the side. Viper strike from great range. This is going to be two heroes that they're going to pick up here. They're still trying to go on Cloud. They get Dooms down. Now stunned by Doom. But there's an EMP bringing down everyone low. Shanks is running for the hills. Lich is going to pick up one that's going to bounce between the familiars. They only do 5% damage. And Zero, what looked like such a great fight, is going to turn around completely. Do Doom is now also around him here. He gets the ulti onto Raping Ninja. A lot of trouble here. The deafening blast coming through. The creeps are doing so much damage. Clissy Bananas no! does have mana for buyback. Now he does. Raping Ninja's gonna get brought down on the side. They don't want to fight around this, uh, around us if they can. We're gonna have to see. Oh, nice four stop over there by his ally. There is Sheep Stick on cooldown. The Ice Wall is ready and waiting. Clissy Bananas is gonna get brought down. There's gonna be a Sheep on to Santo. We're probably gonna see more magic happening here. Attack. We don't have Ghost Walk for quite a while. The level death and Shanks gets brought down as well. What a turnaround there by uh, NSD. That was a team wipe. The Crystal Maiden has since was fought, but that was a full team wipe from NSD. Who... It looked like such a good start though. Yeah. The isolated two heroes. What Dyer's really was so, so horrible attack. was that. Or oh, as uh, NSD move into the rush, but what really was so horrible was just that. The Klings put so much distance between himself and um, the entire energy mm -hmm. team by the time there was a resp well, there was um, any reaction. Oh, Ice Wall gonna catch the Lich, or is it Doom's 
Doom is coming in here in a lot of trouble. We need to see a force off. Shanks is gonna die. This is a dieback by him. He's gonna be dead for 73 seconds. He didn't even manage to convert the Lich. That was a horrible mistake by him. And now Viper is actually standing in the mid lane. They're not gonna be able to do very much. They're just gonna be bringing down in the illusions here. Rush is getting low. It's less than a third HP. Top lane is pushing in. I think that someone has to go deal with the Rush at the top. Yeah, someone definitely has to go peel, deal with that push to the top. That, that T2 is on full health, but it is taking a lot of damage. The LGP comes in and just feeds. I don't know what he was thinking. If he was trying to move into Nova to last, last hit and get the familiars to deny the tower or something, the deny the Aegis or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing. What Crystal Maiden does best, I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, he hasn't fed that much this game. Yeah. He's 1 for 5 for 8. Radiant structures given the, the heroes that we see on the NSD side and given Radiant's how bad he top lane was for them, you'd think it'd be a lot worse than that. But the the, the kind of phase max move speed uh, lifestealer, race car lifestealer is is working out for NSD very well here. It did exceptional work in that in that last fight just because once he turned his phase with on, he was running around the team fight like a mad thing. He managed to take off. I think kill the two support heroes and then run straight back for the invoker within seconds. So I mean, if he was doing really, I suppose the Sang and Yasha is actually doing good work for him combined with the phase boots and drums. It gives him 500 move speed when he has those phase boots activated. Circus Ninja's actually picked up a Vlad, so he's going to be providing some extra life steal for uh, for the life stealer, and he's just going to be stacking up the ancients here for the life stealer as well. Shanks, in the meantime, is now back alive, but. They're going to be looking down to do some counter warding around the rush, but I'm not sure that Ian can actually afford to go in with. Uh... They can definitely afford to go on this Doombringer mid. Yeah. There's no. As uh, Clitzy Banana is going to die here once, maybe twice. I think he should definitely turn around and get a blast off. He's trying to juke. Is he going to be able to TP? Is it a shock? They're going to bring him down, and he's just. As uh, Doom dies mid, they get a kill top. Now he's going to fight for his life. I don't think he should be running here, even if he gets off. I think he should just turn and try hit the guy. I mean, this is not a not the best situation really for him. Yeah, he knows he's got a clicks after him, and his team is on the way. Shankster's making his way up here as fast as Cloud is going to just TP out. He knows that there's trouble. Oh, MFD is actually going to get caught! Holy Don't juice! Kill. What a Who long tornado! Try? What? Max Wix, did you see the range? What? That was like 3,000 range over there. That was. Really unlucky from Make My Day, who had to TP in the exact spot that the tornado was going at maximum range. I think that Clitzy, if he turned earlier and fought, the other people would be so low that they would have been yeah. in a position where, like, Ian would have been able to respond much faster. It looked like a one for one, really, there, Doom for Clitzy, but Clitzy just, you know, made the right decision. Well, made a decision Radiant's which turned out to work out okay for him. I'm not going to say whether it was right or wrong right now. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't seen a gem come up from Ian, actually. I'm surprised we haven't seen a, den a gem from NSD, though. True. From both there's, sides, actually. Yeah, there's I've... been a lot of times when Invoker has just skirted away mm -hmm. and very low HP. He's got yeah. quite a lot of gold, though, but he probably can't buy back for a few more minutes because of the previous buyback. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, no, he's still got two minutes left on that. In terms of fantasy points, friends, Invoker... In the hands of Shanks and Clitzy Bananas on the Wraith King, currently sitting pretty at 8 for 6, Wraithing Ninja not leading leading like he normally does at this stage, but I mean, he's played really, really well as well. 5 for 2 for 11, got an AC up now, so means that everyone hits harder. Everyone just does that little inkling more damage, and it needs that means that we need to see a response in terms of AC coming out. Luckily for the side of Ian, they've got one of their own, so pretty much cancelling each other out, really. Yeah, they both they both seem to be picking up core items at around about the same time. I must say, just on uh, the Clinks has picked up a a Black King bar, which I think is quite good. Just it's going to stop all that magic damage coming out from the Invoker and see it. The Viper is still going to be able to get his yeah. stuff off on him, and he's still pretty weak. I mean, thirteen hundred HP. Mm -hmm. But I must say that Santo has Radiant's been middle tower in this mid attack. game playing out of his boots, getting three man stuns once he's picked up that Blink Dagger on multiple yeah. occasions. Yeah, the thing is that the positioning, like, the first time was excusable by yeah. him, the other times, not really at all. Mm -hmm. And good for him for noticing that, uh, noticing that it's an abusing, abusing Ian's mistake. So Raping Ninja's just pushing down middle here. He's gonna get ulti from Viper and he's just gonna rage to stop the, stop the damage, but it still takes the slow. We've got five heroes, five on five here middle, so 
Both teams are just gathered up around here. It looks like we're going to have an engagement sometime soon. Flitty Banana doesn't have enough for buyback, I don't think, which is a little bit worrying. The Zero has picked up his Argonne Scepter, so he's got three familiars flying around, which are about to spot out NSD here. But Raping Ninja still got a little bit of time left oh, on that Oh, they on MMD here, blinking away. There's all... There's all... These familiars are doing a lot of good damage here. Preemptive no, EMP Tornado, this is maybe not the best. Attack. Didn't work out so well for them. I think mid tower could be under a lot of pressure here. Wards definitely could come down and... We're seeing this kind of slow rumbling Dyer's push by NSD. Very reminiscent in some ways of uh, the the big finals last year between E and Bravado Gaming, where mm -hmm. you know the game seemed quite close. It was going one way, going the other, and then there was a push by one team, followed by a push by the other team, and that's how the game was sealed up. Here comes the uh, blink yeah, forward. Random here is in a little bit of trouble, but they're do? all going to back out. They're just going to say, okay, well, we're willing to to lose that. Oh, now stun's coming forward here. Two man stun, two man stun, and now they're going in. Make my day. The supports are going to die. It's Circus Ninja. He is going to get his ulti off. The ninja on Terrapin, the ulti on Terrapin ninja, Shanks is in a lot of trouble. He's gonna die as well. Buyback by Shanks. Crystal Maiden doing a lot of damage with her ulti there. Raping ninja gets the infest bomb. And this we're gonna see fun. brother Dylan take the fall here. Raping ninja is gonna die. Aegis brings him back alive. We see the ice wall being miscast over there. This is going to be a very, very tough decision for them. And who is he gonna go on? He's gonna go on Shanks. The Viper ulti coming forward here. He has Cloud in the back. Raping Ninja's gonna go down, or is he? He is, and Cloud's only got Windwalk, now he has it again. The stun, blind stun coming forward. Is there gonna be a tornado? It's under a sentry ward. Five men killed. Minus five for NSC, only minus three for the side of energy with a buyback by, Ran by Shanks. Random hero in that fight, cast his ulti like four times. Gosh. I mean, the CM ulti is doing just work in almost every single one of these team fights so far. And that was only level 2 ulti, eh? Yeah. It's going to be level 3 soon enough. It's going to be level 7. Well, he's just just got his level 11, so it's going to be a while before we see that level 60 ulti coming out of the CM. But it's been doing enough damage as it is for the meantime. I mean, he they can be proud of that. And that's been a team fight both ways in the last two team fights. They're barreling up mid here, so... Ian, they've got to hold their composure. What are they going to do? Are they going to fall back? Rosh is not back for a, a fair while still. There's one minute left on that. Um, and... With Zero pushing out the bot lane with his familiars, they're gonna try to take down this tier two. The final tier two uh, remaining for NSD. The score is 26 to 26. The difference Dyer's is 3,000 gold. Under and really, that's not a lot at all. The alacrity on Kitsi Bananas means he attacks at 357. Only 47, 43 shy of max attack speed. And uh, we see Ian waiting on the hill here, waiting patiently for someone to make a mistake. We see Invoker's picked up Ultimate Orb. What's he going to go for? Link delayed Lincoln Sphere? Or are we going to see that Scotty build, the kind of what would normally be the, the pub crusher build? I think Shanks is just getting upset with uh, with being doomed, so I think we may just see a Lincoln Sphere come out of him. We see two yeah. core items come out of come out of NSD. Uh, the Lucifer is picked up a Shiver's Guard, and the Nex has actually picked up a Basher. So while, oh. while he didn't oh, go they for saw the. That. They saw that. They saw <coughs> Doom just get. Uh, Nikes infested and they're standing here. Interesting position. The stun comes forward. Only catches one. It's going to be an over coming out here. Big Lithium ulti. It's going to catch between all of them. Zero's trying to do damage. Woo! This is a horrible fight here for Ian. Three dead straight off the bat. Four dead off the bat. And I don't know why they've, they're held in that such a choke. Brother Dylan comes back. He's trying to run, but he's going to just die. He's going to buy back or oh, respawn right off the bat. And the birds are moving forward here. They're going to try to do something, but. You're gonna have to turn around and just not feed. So that's another team wipe from NSD. Fight. Yeah, you can't like, like they can't fight like that against mm. NSD. They don't have like they can't they just they just don't have the tools at, at their disposal. This puts the net worth huge up in uh, NSD's favor, at least in the, at the top t end of the graph. In terms of buyback, Shanks can't buy back. He's still down for 50 seconds. We don't see Random Hero being able to buy back. It's just. It's just Christy Bananas and Brother, brother LGP. Under hey, Times are definitely tough here. Yeah. I mean, the lifesteal is now just a, a thousand gold away from picking up a full Abyssal Blade, which is going to be problems. But it looks like his Saiyan Ash and is actually working out for him. Zero just feeds him. Uh, I think that this is now, that was like a very, very Radiant's significant feed right there. Fallen. I think this may just be the, the Rex, if not. I mean, may not be the GG yet, but it looks like things are going to clear. Clitzy Banana doesn't have his ulti here. Oh, his ulti just cooled down, so he's going to be up, going to be alive. 
And right in here on the side here, Clipsy Banana is also okay, the melee the barracks for the range rifles. They're gonna Brady's lose mid tower. Mid. But this is actually like a huge mistake. I don't understand at all why Visage went in and just died there. Like, what was he doing? Like, he was trying to delay the racks falling, but even if the racks are delayed from falling, they're definitely gonna fall. Yeah. So there's no reason for you just to go give more gold away. Yeah, definitely a mistake from him just to overextend. I don't, I don't think he was expecting the life stealer to get on his face as quickly. Um, as it did, but Life Stealer now sitting on 4,000 gold, so we probably are going to see an Abyssal Blade pick up here, and the Rush is about to spawn as well, so we may just see a, another Rush come his way before. He may have to sell his drums, however, or the he may just sell his Orb of Venom and pick up the Rush instead. But it looks like Ian are actually deciding to look for the Rush here instead. Rush has just spawned, so they are going to find it if they go into the pits. Electri is going to go into Clitsy Winona, so it looks like they're going to try and sneak a Rush here, which may be... <laughs> Big factor in keeping Ian in this game. Yeah, in this year, know that Rush is, is up sooner or later, so they're gonna come in straight away. Rapping Ninja, race carring at 500 move speed. The familiars are there, they're gonna be scouting out the situation. Rookie this choke is a really dude. horrible place to be walking. One familiar is gonna die. Him. No, it's not, it's gonna get stomped on the ground. Rapping Ninja rages and he runs in, but he's gonna get nothing out of this. Not even the familiars has zero resummons. Bottar is taking damage and Zero is trying to push this, this creep wave back here. Mid is. No, Brother Dylan is behind enemy lines here. He's so, so far ahead. Um, out of position. Oh, he may be in trouble! The stun is- Oh! What? If we saw the Doom, Doom oh. Doom, it would have been massive. Yeah, the Doom obviously doesn't, doesn't want to waste his Doom for Crystal Maiden. Well, but I mean, he... it's got quite a short cooldown. Yeah. It's like 100 seconds. It's like not that long. It's they've, 110, they've almost 2 minutes. Long. There's no pressure really on NSD to seal out the game now. Like, yeah. Oh, sure, the Skeleton King. <laughs> um, the Skeleton King is I, sort of stagnated around 14,000k net worth, which is a little bit worrying considering that the life dealer is considering to climb. Continuing to climb, sorry. Yeah, I think it was just that fight that they lost, and it just mm -hmm. gave like a minute of farming time for Wraith King. I mean, for for life stealer and also mid like mid tower for mid racks falling. Pretty sure life stealer does the most damage on this team, so likely that he would have been the one who got that. Oh, it may things may change in terms of in terms of damage output as Clinks has yeah, Clinks. got his daedalus recipe in the in the bank and enough gold to buy uh, to pick it up. I think he's just looking for enough gold for buyback as well before he picks oh, up his daedalus. We also see Lincoln Spear is come out on uh, the Viper. And probably going to be seeing one on Shanks as well, given that he just doesn't want to die in fights. Like his, yeah. He just wants to be alive, <laughs> like casting lots and lots of spells. In that last fight, if he got a nice Ice Wall down and he wasn't the one doomed, he could have done so much damage. He may hold off on the Lincolns for now, just because he's got that Aegis on him. So he may just hold out and see what, what happens a little bit further into the game. Sure, if he gets doomed, he's got the Aegis this time, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. And we see Clitzy gonna be going for that Abyssal Blade. He really can't we can't afford to see Shanks here get caught up though. He's gotta play it like play it safe. Play it cool. Be we, cool, Dylan. Be we cool. finally see a, a gem pick up on random hero, so he's gonna be running he, around two sides. I think the Visage bought that in the yeah. last fight, and then Visage died, so managed to see him pick that up. Let's okay. have a quick look at the gold values here. Shooting down seven and a half K towards NSD. In terms of experience, it's always been an uphill battle really because of the, the way in which Ian's been playing. But they they even further behind in terms of that they're like eleven thousand gold behind I mean eleven thousand experience round. Deadless comes up on Clinks. There's so many high priority targets for um for NSD to be well for energy to target on the side of the NSD. There's mm -hmm. the Doom, the Clinks, and also the Life Stealers. Kind of tricor as uh, there's only really a like a a track. Well, there's kind of a tricor on the side of of Ian. Yeah. But to a lesser extent, more of the magical, you know, CC crowd control um, type of heroes like the Invoker, and that, those can just get isolated by being doomed. The th the problem why I disagree with you on that um, in the the fact that there's an Aegis already on Invoker yeah. is that like if he gets if he dies and it takes him five seconds to respawn, that's enough time for his whole team to get killed. Yeah, fair. Yeah, with the damage output coming from Clinks. Clinks and, uh, and Life Stealer, things are really scary for the rest of his team. I don't know why Clitzy Bananas hasn't gone BKB though in this game. He's picked up a Basher, so 
it's gonna look like he's but looking I mean, towards the abyssal blade. He, but if he's if he's just sheeped and mm -hmm. polyed, yeah. I mean, well, polyed and hit and shackled, he's not doing any damage. Which is exactly what has been and happening like, in the team all fights. All he needs to do is like hit people. Like he can easily one v one this life stealer. Okay, maybe not with the abyssal blade now, but they can go toe to toe. Yeah, the the crit gives him gives him uh, where he may be lacking in terms of pure damage. The crit gains that back for him. If he gets a mm -hmm. and he gets stuck, if he yeah. if the fight starts off with him stunning life stealer and then casting get, having a lacrity cast on him, they they will win the fight. Like they will you will crush. Russian. Raping Ninja has been absolutely on form in raging off those stuns almost <laughs> almost every single fight. But I think the biggest problem for Skeleton King is, as you mentioned, Make My Day, who's just been shutting him down so effectively. Coming out of coming out of uh, coming out of reincarnation, it gets shipped and shipped and hold almost every single time without fail. So the thing is that we we don't see oh as Invoker picks up his Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. We don't see, uh, as and also as the mid lane pushes in, the Mega Creeps doing their justice here, but we don't see any Necrobooks. We haven't seen Necrobooks in the last, <laughs> this entire series. Yeah. Not one Necrobook. And that's something which is like a very, very strange disconnect to international Dota at the moment, really. Yeah, Necrobooks are, are really strong and they provide, once you get to level 3, it also provides true vision, uh, true, true sight, so that's really good in spotting out the Clinks and Invoker. Uh, Dendi does like getting uh, Necrobox every now and then on his on his invoker as well. So and Necrobox are a really good pick a uh, pickup for invoker. The, the thing is that it's just like the Lich ulti. If, if, yeah. if the Lich ulti starts exactly. just hitting and hitting and hitting into like Necro units, the Lich is gonna kill himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure Ian have the familiars that to help and try tank some of that. Yeah. Some well, of I mean, that Lich damage. But. The familiars the familiars are great against Lich and they yeah. do take. Like they have ninety five percent magic reduction, so they take a little bit of damage, but not yeah. that much. It's really it's negligible almost. Zero's I think Zero needs to get a uh, Ghost Scepter because I think he's just like, picked it up right now. Did yeah, he? it's on his way to him. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. There's still a ring of Aquila of random heroes that needs to be sold. Yeah, both teams are just looking to. I'm surprised that. Uh, Ian haven't tried to get rid of uh, get rid of NSD's wards. They have uh, they did have a look around in the northern jungle, but they're sort of sitting up in their base at the moment. NSD are actually under cover of smoke. Cloud currently is currently a life steal inside of him, and they're going to look to try and get a pick off here. They might actually be lucky to decide to go down, but no, they decide to go up in the meantime. It looks like. Uh, I think maybe as soon as Invoker reveals bottom, they might turn around. You're gonna just take out the ancient stack here. You do get scouted out straight away by Ian. And Ian knows that by holding these two side towers, there's only there's only two options available for NSD. Either push for the side towers, which I'm mm -hmm. sure that Ian will defend at this stage, or option two, go down the mid and go for the win. Yeah. Push creeps into the base and just go for the win. I'm and just getting a little bit worried for Ian if they if they plan to carry on this game. Into the very late. I mean, Clinks is currently sitting on 4,000 gold with a BKB, Orchids, and Daedalus. So he may be thinking about selling his Midas soon just to pick up another item. Maybe something like an MKB. Yeah, the thing is that like Crystal Maiden kind of fades off to nothing. Yeah. But the whole game, like Lich is going to be significant. He's going to be going through some good ultis. We're going to see Life Stealer throw like doing damage. Like all of the, every single one of NSD side is going to scale pretty well. Crystal Maiden, unless she has like a level 16 Ags or BKB and can get a good ulti off, mm -hmm. she's going to be like very, yeah. very easy to kill. Looking like we're going to be going for some trades here. Clipsy Banana is actually pushing up towards the tier 3 in the top lane. Radiant's whereas top NFC, tower is under attack. You know, there's no TP scroll on like most Radiant's of their team. Tower has Lich fallen. has one, Clinks has one, Shadow Shaman has one, but. Clixie's going to try to go uh, high ground here. And Shanks is also here in a position where he's got a TP scroll. 
They're going to be able to try Geraxia and get back to the Radiant's pin, but with Glyph getting used out, Shanks is already TPing back. We see the melee racks getting attack. taken down by Clips of Bananas. Radiant's melee barracks getting taken fallen. down here as well. So Dyer's it's going to be a one-for-one one trade. Uh, this just if we can now see confirmed. either side Good grabbing some stragglers here, this could be very good. There's lots of TPs going from the high ground. There's still no tornado to save it up. So it's, it's gone fallen. from one racks to none to... Like, it's two racks for one, yeah. Two racks for one. It's it's better for Ian, but it's not ideal. You know, like both sides have now got to allocate someone to defend their racks. Ian have got to allocate two means that defending the third lane is much harder, but it's also still a lot better to, to fight like 3v4 as opposed to 4v5. Yeah, Ian, uh, Ian are at least like going to have the creep like, advantage. Three, obviously. Like, if it's the Crystal Maiden out of the fight uh, for a Lich or a yeah. Shadow Shaman, that's like, you know, that's that's ideal. And uh, Clips of has just picked up his Abyssal Blade and he's still got enough for buyback, hey, so uh, he's so going to be able to shut down Maybe that Life Steal of 2 Rage. And this is the third rush, so there is going to be a cheese. Uh, Santa is going to sell his one and pick up the cheese. Doom's got a points booster that he doesn't own. Raping Ninja buying that up, so I think Raping Ninja is going to be going for Scardy. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, and he's, picked, he's finished this Scardy, in fact. Wow. So what went on to Courier Home? Is it going to be anything, or did he sell his drums? I didn't actually see. Uh, I believe he sold his drums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That actually is quite huge. There's no one else with drums on his side. It means that, like, drums is like one of those things which are amazing early, but, like, has value all the way through the game. Yeah, we oh, may sorry. see the Lich just finish up, finish up a pair of drums for himself. He does have yeah. the bracer in tow. What I was saying earlier is that, like, the massage familiars are very helpful at this whole being a rack down. Like, being yeah. able to, to, like, chain stun each one of them, you know, synchronize your stun so you get most of them stunned at, at a time, and... We do see that NSD are Your pushing this bottom tower. A lot of damage coming out, it's gonna just melt. We got Clips of is pushing top. Has fallen. He's gonna be TP back in. I don't think that Ian you know, are willing to trade their final racks and Mega mega Creeps for... Bad dude's top um, tower gonna fall over soon. Stun coming forward, Clipsy Bananas. It's gonna be the Crystal Maiden they're going. Viper throws his ulti down. Is a big EMP tornado. Doom's getting taking some good damage on the side. Ian have to turn around here. They can't go out of their base like this. They're gonna catch Circus down in the side. They bring Lich down. He gets his ulti off. It's gonna do some good damage. Shanks is doomed. He has back the raping ninja. Not doing a lot. Clipsy Bananas. He's gonna respawn. He's in a great position. Brother Dylan gets silenced up. He's running. He gets Shiva's. Oh, is it? Is the damage enough to pop off? It is! And Red King Ninja's doing some good damage here. Five action from Invoker. We see Red King dying for the second time. He buys back into the game. Shanks is gonna get high ground and stun. Not forthcoming from the Doom. This is an amazing fight for both sides here. Blink dodging the tornado is the Shadow Shaman. And Viper's back. He throws down one. There's a sheep one to MMD. And Red King Ninja going to town here. They're gonna bring down Red King Ninja or are they? Stun going on to the onto Cloud. He's gonna bring so down Cloud instead of teams and Raping Ninja escapes. And it's like barely, barely escaping. A lot of wards here for them to farm up. They haven't taken any structural damage anywhere else. I think that Ian are kind of okay with that hold, despite having to make multiple buybacks. The whole thing is that they were forced to buy back, whereas yeah. these NSD players, two of them just dying and gonna be chilling around for 70 seconds, gone to get some coffee. Yeah, and uh, the NSD can just afford to to do uh, show that the the T fight didn't really go ultimately into their favor, I suppose. But Ian had to use a lot of buybacks, so that's still Ian losing their losing any advantage that they had just because they had to spend that gold to buy back into the game. Clisimiana did well there in that fight, though, to shut down the life stealer. Um, but he actually used his abyssal blade on the clinks, which and the clinks just turned around and sapped a creep and then killed Clissy almost instantly. Well, his first life at least. So maybe it might be better just to use the uh, use the abyssal blade on the life stealer because he was he did actually have the opportunity to use it and perhaps bring that life stealer down early uh, early into the fight. Oh, what Kinsey was doing there, I don't know if you spotted, but he'd um, he still had the the debuff from buying back. Yeah. So he like lasted all the creeps and put them on one hit. And the debuff ended and he just da 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 da. <laughs> Maelstrom okay. for the win. And there's Ian once again top. They're looking to make some plays. Oh, double damage rune. What an opportune time for that to spawn up here. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a sheep on the Doom, which is like huge. 
Oh wow. Yeah. And Raping Ninja once again just pushing down this bottom lane here. Doing uh, so much good damage. The attack speed slow is really, really significant at this stage of the game. It's kind of like... Double damage! Oh, and this very, very premature EMP over here. Yeah, I think Raping Ninja... He's gonna... Ooh. He's ta taunting with the fact that he wants to go into high ground. I think they're gonna wait for Santa to go in and... And get a stun off. Stun off first. He's still got that stun screen that he's uh, devoured, so he's... Still gonna be able to throw the stun, which he has been doing really well so far this game. Cloud has got a DD on him, and has got an e picked up an Eagle Song, so he's going to be doing a, just a truck ton of damage. It looks like the fight is actually going to break out. Cloud is doing a lot of damage to Clint's Bananas. Meanwhile, Random Hero passed his ulti on Cloud. Uh, Raging Ninja is actually a Abyssal Blade. Random Hero, but LGP helps out in just oh, shutting that down. Getting caught out here, taking so much damage. They need some invoker stuff to do to help them out. And with them dying, Zero oh, dying, this looks like it's all over here for energy. The Dream is dead as uh, LGP takes the fall, and NSC man. win the series 2-1. What, what an gone. epic series, this third game is so, so close. Decided wow, to man. The Dire Blue Dawn and now that's it, everything yeah, is But NSC taking it to the third game, and they currently move into first position in the New Gaming League with Bravado Black up against them on Tuesday night. Bravado Black uh, also undefeated thus far, but played one less game, they're playing IFG tomorrow night, so yeah. unless IFG really help, like, the thing is that the IFG game is pretty pointless, because if if IFG lose, uh, beat Bravado, and Bravado, like, it's still do or die for Bravado versus NSC, you know, yes. like, yeah. whoever wins that game goes first, but guys, thank you very much for tuning in, this has been uh, the Duke Gaming League between Energy Esports and NSC, uh, full on Dukes, and full on Dukes take it 2 to 1. Uh, my name is Knoxville, joining me was Demonic. We are going to jump straight into uh, the EN versus VNR game coming up in uh, just a few moments. Um, and yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. Oh, Duke Gaming League, powered by Telcom, sponsored by Steel Series and ASUS. And uh, we will see you in this game soon. See you now.